The Swedes may be short on population, but they're big on innovation. Volvo and Saab are just two of the names known around the world. And here each year, the Nobel Prize is awarded, the world's most prestigious honour for innovations in science and medicine. Innovators by definition are the leaders in their field, but for some that genius can mean they walk a lonely path. For instance, the man who sat in judgment as president of the assembly that awards the Nobel Prize for medicine. To some of his colleagues, his work is far more brilliant than any he's judged, but for the most part, the world ignores him. If he's wrong, he's just a fool, but if he's right, then he's made the medical discovery of the century. He's Professor Bjorn Nordenstrom, for many years head of diagnostic radiology here at Stockholm's Karolinska Hospital. This morning he's performing a unique operation. The woman on the operating table has cancer. Professor Nordenstrom believes his radical techniques may save her. The patient has a primary in the abdomen, gynecological area, and then she got metastases to the lungs. They have been treated with at least five different kinds of, of toxic poisons, <laughs> toxic uh, remedies. And the tumor, which you may see here, is small. That is uh, two months ago. And now it has grown. And this one must be treated some way, otherwise it will grow and kill the patient. Bjorn Nordenstrom has pioneered many of the techniques in clinical radiology that are now used regularly in every major hospital in the world. But it's a big jump from the science of radiology to curing cancer. Although, as we'll see, Professor Nordenstrom doesn't believe the gap is as great as many may think. I found that certain tumors which uh, respond, do not respond on conventional techniques. They have responded on this technique. What's your, what's your success percentage now, your success rate? Now this is a wrong question because I can never, I cannot get statistics because I don't have a uniform material and I don't have a com material for comparison. The only thing I can say that I can apply this technique without doing any harm to the patient, which is the first important thing, and I can show that in many cases I can get complete control of tumors which were non-treatable with other techniques. And I do have eight-year survivals of such patients now. To some, his technique may seem like that of a maniacal electrician with delusions of grandeur. Guided by X-ray equipment, which he designed himself, he's positioning two platinum electrodes near the tumour in this woman's chest. There you see it. So it's right okay. in the centre of the tumour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The operation requires only a local anaesthetic, and when the electrodes are in place, Nordenstrom will turn on a small electric current. After a few hours, the electrodes will be removed and the patient will go home. It sounds simple enough, but the theory behind it has taken him 20 years to develop. So it took you 20 years to, to even find an area, so, an so, so find the, the, no, the opening. Then suddenly everything fell apart and it was so, so simple. <laughs> it was too simple. What Nordenstrom has discovered is that our bodies are a complex universe of electrical activity. Electrical circuits course through our veins and arteries. Voltages build and fluctuate between organs. He calls them biologically closed electric circuits. Back in 1628, the English physician William Harvey described the circulation system of the human bloodstream. It was one of the major breakthroughs of modern medicine. If Bjorn Nordenstrom's theories are correct, they rank equally important as Harvey's discovery. Nordenstrom's research suggests that the body's electrical circuitry is something like a battery. The conducting cable is the blood plasma and the fluid between cells. Just like a battery, oppositely charged ions within the body drive the circuit. Muscle use builds up positively charged ions in tissue, while nearby tissue appears negatively charged. 
But unlike a battery, the body's electrical circuits oscillate between positive and negative. This can be brought on by an injury, and in the capillaries, the oscillation controls the flow of white blood cells. The accumulation of white cells has long been observed as being crucial to the healing process, but only Nordenstrom has explained why. Because the plasma, which is in between the cells in the blood, are conductive, like the wire in a cable. And outside any cable you have an insulating sheet and the vessel walls function the same way. That means that the vessels in the body, they can function as electrically insulated conducting cables. And this is an entirely new concept. Because... Nordenstrom's theories, when fully understood, might prove the key to understanding acupuncture, until now a science which has been only grudgingly given a place in Western medicine. The Chinese people, they speak about qi, which is actually, to me, electric energy. I may be wrong, but that's what I have to think. And they speak about yin and yang, which are two opposite factors, good and evil, and positive and negative, etc. To me, it's positive and negative violence. And some nice people say that in that respect, my work on the closed circuitry, biologically closed electric circuit, is a bridge to the ancient traditional Chinese medicine. It's uh, possible and uh, it would be very nice if that is true. The potential of Nordenstrom's discoveries is enormous. His research could provide the key to understanding the body's immune system. But the orthodox medical world remains sceptical. He's a loner, and to evaluate what he's talking about, you have to be multi-talented in at least three specialist fields of medicine. In the trial of Bjorn Nordenstrom, the jury is still out. No. Professor, you're a modest man, but can I ask you, how do you think history might judge your work? Well, I believe that uh, this, the knowledge about this will come. You cannot stop it, because it's right. But it's uh, revolutionary, because it has so many implications. And therefore, many people are, in a, in a very reasonable way, uh, reluctant. <laughs> Do you think they'll listen to you eventually? Well, uh, I don't know if they will listen to me, but uh, other people will take on this. But of course it will take time. I will be dead. But after, after me, they will speak about it. <laughs> <laughs>